Hello there everyone and welcome back my fellow Spierdikes, I'm your host Tam Mokalova. And right now we have a little kerfuffle that we need to mop up the floor with the bald man, the handsome blonde beast, and a fat guy, but right now we're focusing on taking out the blonde beast. Oh, so handsome. Anyways, um, we got quite a few comments to go through, but we'll address those as we are parading through, <clears throat> was it, Luxembourg or I guess the Rhineland here, Moselin. Ebony Sabatua strike out infrastructure. Event about enemy agents blowing infrastructure. They will pay for this. Blowing infrastructure. That is something I never thought I would hear in TNO. But maybe I should stop thinking about stuff like that. Anyways. Enemy saboteurs strike arms factories. They will pay for this. Hopefully not with the uh, Reichsmachs, but we'll see what, what they pay with. Hopefully blood. We'll help them out. Help them out. There's only three divisions, but Hadrish, not super difficult. Actually, it's weird to see that actually uh, Bowman has Strasbourg. I guess it is supposed to be part of... Uh, look at that. Him number one. Uh... The SS, but you know, whatever. Strike industry. Smoking. Smoking sometimes is okay. It depends on what you're smoking. We'll put it like that. Cool. Um really, Hadrian is not gonna be a problem. I want I want to destroy Borman. Borman, I just don't like Borman. Borman, he's bald. Not because I don't like him because he's bald, but just because he's Borman. Uh anything else here? We can buy more stuff on the black market. I don't really care about that stuff. Over here, we're looking really good. We're at war. We spent more money for civilian spending, military spending, but like, we still have a deficit, which is awesome. Our allies abroad. National Kriegshilfe Organization. Hmm. Dissidents know more. Criminal knows more. Uh, Deuterinos know more. And promise amnesty? Uh, Daughters of Germania. I like the Daughters of Germany. Hmm. Well, let's do National Kriegshilfe Organization. The National War Support Organization is an oversight board suggested by Speer. This organization will organize the entirety of our civilian and military war apparatus into a single, easily manageable organization that will oversee our entire war effort. The benefits of streamlining everything pertaining to war is obvious. Our administrators can easily shift resources to whatever sectors need material the most. Stricter guidelines and quotas will ensure that our military production runs at peak efficiency, and our military will get whatever supplies it needs quicker and more constantly. This is the fight of our lives. We must fight with every means available to us. Nothing less than total war will suffice. Better out of supply, supply consumption, and hurts consumer goods, but that is a okay. Now we have four divisions here. Where is that other tank division? Why are you taking so long? Three, two, we have some Marines here to beat up, and here we go. Well, once it's done, cool. Take you off, go right there and take you off. Take it off. When in doubt, take it off. Go right on ahead. Eight has arrived. And the bloody German Civil War. Anything that can spit lead and anyone that can hold a gun to their hands is good enough to push to the front lines, like 12-year-old kids. We've received a shipment of, from weapons, of weapons from the Kingdom of Romania, as well as significant manpower boosts in forms of volunteers. We'll make good use of both men and equipment. Push to the front line. They shall be used to speed up our victory. And in the end, make the difference between victory and defeat. Heil Speer. Heil Deutschland. And we'll receive some from Finland and the Iberian Union. And we have some coffee here to keep us nice and... Not drunk, but satisfied. Satisfied. Mm, let's go with Scavenger. But we don't have enough uh, command power, which sucks, but whatever. Go, 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 tanky boys. Ah! We've even encircled one of their own tank divisions. Goodbye, good sir. You're not very good. We don't like you. Die. I think my main goal... Um, oh, they do have some helicopter divisions. I think I might actually send you guys up here this time. So we can go bing, bong, boom. Because I want to make sure we delete as many divisions as possible before everyone unites against us to kill us off. That's probably the biggest goal I have right now. Because even though Goring and the Bald Men are fighting each other in Dresden, and probably burning to the ground, eventually they will unite if we're too successful. And that's, I guess that's kind of a life, uh, some life advice. If you're too successful, people will really not like you. Then again, I'm not that successful right now anyways. But anyways... Oh, just some things my dad tells me. Military budget boost. I think we need to spend and then increase our GDP. 88 billion. Look at that. And while we're in a war. That's really not bad. Let's go in. If we possibly can. And then cut you off. And then go down there. And then go down there. And go there. Send in the motorized. And this is in right there too. You will help out. And we'll kill off five. Hopefully. Hopefully. Five. Goring divisions. Help them out. Don't let them move. No, 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 sir. You don't need movement. Russia captured. If you like to read about that, please go right ahead. Our men will continue to fight like lions. Beasts. Ah. Oh, that's so nice. Beautiful. So how many divisions do we have? We have 65. Ultimately, they have about, probably, I would say, 130, maybe, in total max. Hadrus is almost gone, which is nice to see, but we, I don't really care, I'll be honest. Um, There's divisions up here, too. We could probably cut this off. Boom, 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 maybe. 
Mm, Borman, Goring. Really, Borman has way too many divisions for me to really like. So let's go back down here. And we'll go snip snip. What do we do to enemies? We snip snip them. And every time we say snip snip, I get a little uncomfortable. But that's just me, maybe. Cool. Couple comments. Uh, which... Uh, which way are we going for this campaign? Well, I did say in the last video, if we got about two, 150 likes, I should have asked for 200 maybe, but for 150 likes, we will take at least the full reformance route and maybe another route as well for Spare. So at the time of this recording, as you can see, um, <laughs> we have more than enough likes to go ahead and do that. So we'll definitely do at least two routes. I know I think the third route is like, there's no content for it. So if, if you fail or something like that, I'm not exactly 100% sure, but we will see when we get there. Thank you, thank you. Send the militia in as well, because we like militia dudes. I guess the other two. You know what? You might as well start attacking here as well, because you have a lot of uh, options. No, no, you don't. It's nice to have options, but we don't always have options. And special forces would be very good. Now we can actually improve ourselves. How about we focus on tank organization, Schwerpunkt Tactics? And it's only two divisions, but two more divisions to kill off are, well, pretty good. There you go. Thank you very much. And they have been defeated. I don't like seeing these guys. Bowman's Germany really needs to lose his soldiers. So boom, boom. And go boom. Boom, boom. See if we can do that. And up next, fix it up. Not bad. Arms from our brothers. Arms from our neighbors. I'll use it brought. I don't want her recovery or organization, stuff like that. I don't like getting penalized with this consumer goods stuff. I really don't. Fix it up. I'll do arms from our, our brothers. Our contacts throughout Germany have proved most valuable so far, but we still need more help if we're going to triumph. We need more than anything guns. For the time being, we have the men, but we don't have enough rifles to go around, and some of our weapons in use are woefully out of date. We need to lean on our contacts. Whatever firearms or loyalists can scrounge up and smuggle to our occupied territories need to get here at once. We cannot hope to compete with our rivals if we don't even have the basic firearms to face them. Absolutely. Not you, not you, and then not you, and then go there. Cool, do we have any... Send half you guys here, and then send half you guys there the two. And I'll send you there, boom, boom, boom. Help them out. Ah, ball man, you balding menace. Who actually... Instead of this group, go right here. They're very weak. They're incredibly weak right here. You cut off whatever's over here as well, so... Oh, no, no, my friends. No, no, you don't need to do that. Come on, go, go in there. You guys can do it. You guys got them legs. Them pretty little legs? I don't know about that, but... Ah, oh, Leipzig. Beautiful. Beautiful. Um, what else do we have here? Actually, you have this group, and you guys... Eh, we'll save maybe some time for that. Anyone adds upgrades? No, we do not. Unfortunate. It's alright, now we cut off Borman from these guys, which kind of sucks. But we should do okay. So we're really going to focus on Borman. Like, Borman, I just don't like Borman. I'm not sure anyone actually likes Borman realistically, so. Alright, alright. And let's go in. Once the game is done, liking. Oh, good. Whoa, another field democracy. Look at that. I've never seen that one before, but then again, I haven't played too much of uh, Brazil. I want to play as Brazil because the demo content, um, I'd love to play again. I was actually contemplating doing, instead of doing Speer, I was doing um, Brazil maybe, but obviously it's not meant to be right now. Do not let them, well, they already sent the tanks in. Do not let the Marines through. There you go. Not as many divisions as we like, but hey, you know what? Two divisions are still two divisions. Alright, not bad. And these guys will die anyway, so I'm not too worried about that. Thank you. Alright. Hadrish is about to die, but I'm going to keep him alive for now. Hopefully that Borman or Hadrish will just kill each other off, maybe. I'm really focused on Borman. Borman, the bald man. J uh, Goring won't be too bad to beat. I mean, our tanks are pretty good, so. I'll go bingo to bongo to dingo dongo. Uno, dos. Sometimes Trace comes after that. There you go. Alright, up next. Next focus, we'll might as well read the next one. Arms from my neighbors. No European in the right minds should want to see any other contender win this bloody civil war. Bormann dreams of being the next Hitler. Goring dreams of a world conquered by the Reich. And Hadrus dreams of a world inhabited by Aryans. Which doesn't sound too bad. What saying Europe, European would want anyone in charge other than Speer? We need to swallow our pride and approach our neighbors once again. We need all the material that we can get our hands on. And it is in the European community's best interest that we win this darn war. They won't. They can't refuse. Our request. 
Unless they're bloody ignorance. Which, they might be. They probably are. And without you, go down there. And without you, go down there. Uh, actually, no. There you go. Take a little spin twist. And you go down there too. You should be able to do okay. Hopefully. Keep going, keep going. Go, 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 go. Beautiful. Just go in, guys. Don't worry about it. That's only four more divisions, and they're all militia, but it doesn't matter. Goodbye. These guys are starving over here or something. Yo, these are still Borman soldiers. At this point, we might actually be able to do a general attack if we really wanted to crush him. We could probably do a general attack and win. But let's wait a little bit first. Because we're taking quite a bit of territory. Um, a good place to encircle. I would like to defeat Hadrish. I really would. But there's really not a good place for encirclements here. Let's see, we've got that. We've got Nuremberg. Mm, one, two, three. Four. Well, it's really one, two, three. This tile has nobody there. Let's let the enemies kind of reconvene themselves. And we'll go bingo, uh, dingo, dongo. Let them get in there. Let them get someone in there. That's fine with us. I mean, it doesn't really matter to me. Of course, we have no equipment, but we're working on it. We actually have a lot of guns. That's pretty darn nice. As you can tell, I'm really taking my time with this war. And uh, can we go straight up to there, maybe? Not too bad. Well, they, those guys won very quickly. And you guys have fought right here. Well, uh, I'd recommend one of you guys going there, one of you guys going into here, and then one of you guys going into here as well. That probably would be quite ideal. And then that militia died. Very good. Number captured. Brittany cut ties. We wonder about both of these. Please go ahead. As if they could afford anything less. Our next step, Veen. Oh, wow. We got three of these things done at the same time. 64, of course. Uh, tank support. You know what? We can hit them harder with our tank stuff. And get some more armor on our guys. As well as what? It is 64. 65. Everything is ready to go. Mm, radar would be nice. Yeah, we already have pretty good radar anyways. No, not that one yet. Naval stuff would be a complete waste. Oh. Artillery, yes. Very good. If that's the case... Oh! Goring is attacking us, perhaps? Yes. So you guys go from here to there. Not bad. After this, we will try a general attack. It's probably going to be extremely costly, but... Such is a civil kerfuffle. Getting a little bit more bold in our attacks. And two more divisions go bye-bye. Assist with a wee bit of armor. Goring, oh no, Bowman. He has up to 57 divisions left, which do include quite a few up here, which is very nice. Um, honestly, yeah, he's not looking very good. All right, so after this point, I think any more territory we take will force the allies, or allies, Goring and company to, you know, go against us. Ooh, but I want to destroy another tank division right before we do that. So we go here to there and circle two, two, dos. Zwei Panzers. And then we'll do a general attack. Oh, come on, guys. Let's go. At least they're pretty speedy. Three, two, let's go. Oh, and go right there. And then go right there. That's all you need to do, my friends. All you gotta do. Let's go. Let's go. Actually, since they're taking so long, you actually might be able to race down this way. From here to there to there. Officer assassinations. Well, that's good. <laughs> Not have any more. Good. Tanks, go bye-bye. At this point, everything's... It's pretty much wide open. So, yeah. They still have some helicopters down here. You guys are all around this line here. Give it five, four, three, two. Let's go. Full-scale attack. Uh, these guys... Oh, man. I don't want to attack through here. You actually might do relatively okay. You guys are probably not going to do so well. Um, yeah, I mean, honestly, like, we're going to get to Vienna pretty darn quickly if we really wanted to. You know what? Cut them off from the capital. Cut them all off from the capital. There you go. This is a little bit more suicidal, which is not very good. Goring is pushing into us, which is not very good. But if we can move fast enough against him, we'll be all right. 
arms from rivals. America and Japan are our greatest rivals on the world stage. Ever since the Second World War, we've competed with them for the title of greatest superpower. Although they are our rivals, that doesn't mean we can't ask them for help. A reasonable person winning in Germany, some say, like Albert Speer, winning would be good for a country. Some say leading a world superpower with access to nuclear weapons would put a lot of minds over ease, overseas at ease. And offering us small arms is a small price to pay for the global stability in the long run. It's alright, you guys. Um... Tanks, you're doing a great job, Tanks. Actually, oh, Munich is a capital. Let's go there. Let's go. These guys are not doing great right now. Goring does want to break out, which I do not like. I kind of doubt that you guys could win, so let's wait over here. Not so great, but we're going to get to Munich. We have to. Get to Wien. Actually, uh, you guys hold first. Ah. In the dark times, help is always welcome. No matter where it comes from, Kingdom of Romania has answered our plea for help and accepted to send a substantial shipment of military-grade equipment. Our ideologies might not align, but our immediate goals surely do. Time will tell whether we shall win this war. But one thing is sure, we won't forget this. And but Yabiria as well. Let's go, let's go, 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 go. Scotland? Finland? Great. Now, we have a ticking time bomb here. They might keep pushing in here. Actually, up here, it's looking a little better for us. You might be able to do well here as well. Yes, you can. If Goring wants to make a move against us, then we'll make a move against him. Get across, get across, get across. Get to Munich ASAP. Take everything they got. Motorized, you gotta go in. Gods of the North. Go, 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 go. Munich will be ours. I swear to God it'll be ours. Bormann will burn. Actually, Hadris is doing a lot better against us. There we go. Borman's gone. Borman's gone. Actually, you guys keep going. You guys are doing great. Over here, we gotta help out uh, and take out these guys. Oh, and you guys are still holding out there. That's nice. You wanna read about that? Please go ahead. I can't believe we actually capitulated uh, Borman first, but sure, got captured. Very good. Very good. Uh, you guys go right on ahead. You should be okay. Uh, tanks, go, 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 go. Hadrish, I mean, Hadrish is extremely difficult, so. Any losses they take, they can definitely not replace. You guys, don't worry about that. You hold, you go right here. You start attacking right there. Well, that's not good. You're gonna force the fence, son. Hadrus has got to die. Ah, oh, we almost encircled them there. Get them right here. You can cut those divisions off and kill them off. Yeah, we're definitely. Everyone's struggling here. A whole, 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 whole bunch. We lost a lot of guys. We killed off a lot of Goring soldiers, though. Go in, go in. Hadrish has got to be out of manpower now, right? No, he's got... Oh, he's got a lot. He's got a big... A couple boys here. It's time for your time to shine. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. Maybe not. Why do I have this order mode on? We're winning in some places. We're not winning in some other places, which is not good. There you go. You guys hold. Prepare. The tanks are doing a pretty good job. Actually, we broke over the river. They're done. They're going to be done here. Force the attack. If I have to lose those tanks, so be it. God dang it. You keep beating the crap out of them. Any losses we take, they can't replace either. And there goes Kennedy. Arms from our rivals. Strasbourg captured. Very good. All right, Eliza Brab. Whether the world likes it or not, whoever wins this war will not just affect the German people. The world needs to be to deal with the repercussions as well. Speer isn't just another Nazi. He's just a man who wants to reform the Reich and turn away from a militarized society fueled by slave labor. Speer is the best candidate for Germany, and the world knows it. Overseas nations, America in particular, is and should be interested in who comes out on top here. With a little convincing, it is nearly assured that they will send us some advisors to assist with their war efforts. Good, good, good. I know we're out of equipment, especially no guns. Actually, we're not out of a lot of equipment. Motorized is good, artillery is good, infantry equipment is good. 
Japan refuses to send weapons. When Von Trusko had asked the Japanese for support in the war, most, even our own leader, has deemed it a lost cause. Now it seems that they were right, as a Japanese diplomatic attaché in Rome has lent, let us know that his government isn't interested in helping us at all. While we can't criticize them for their decision, many are accusing Von Trusko of deliberately engaging in an operation that was doomed from the start. Damaging a reputation overseas, we will have to win with what we have. And the US doesn't like it either. Okay, that's fine. I don't really care. I'll be honest, I really don't care. Okay, so at this point, you guys hold and defend. Do not worry about attacking. I said do not worry about attacking. Defend for now. You guys will all defend. We're going to finish off Hadrich and then reunite our forces and then kill them all off. We lost quarter million so far, but honestly, for 400,000 enemy losses, that's not too bad. Look at that. Well, let's make it 600,000 or 700,000, really. Beautiful. Hadrich is dead. I'm going to throw you guys over here and then we're going to combine both armies and we're going to. I'm going to beat the living crap out of these, this fat man. Ah, uh, fat man will no longer be fat when I'm done with him. Now, obviously. This is not the most optimal way to play as Speer or any one of these, you know, contenders. But I will say it does work. It's really not that difficult, and I just got a little loose with my uh, playing. I'll put it like that. I just got a little loose with it. Oh, well. Minus 11 billion? Beautiful. The shield broken? Oh, well. Three. Two. We got enough guys on the line. Let's roll. Full lineup. Go ring, go ring, go ring. You really thought you had a chance, you fat man. Ah, uh, I don't really like Goring. Get down that way. Send a few guys here. And if we make our line weak enough, they will be baited into attacking us. So maybe that too. There you go. How about two? You? Get down there. Beautiful. We've almost cut them off. Or unless we have already. Maybe not. Maybe not. There we go. Now they're completely cut off. This is good. Let, them, let, them, let, let these guys rush in. Oh, it helped if I gave him planning. Three, two, one. That madman's gamble. Or gambit. Speer sat back in his chair, taken aback by the news of the self titled Groff Afrikan Reichstadt. He knew Hans Hutzig was an unhinged man, yet this turn of events was one that he did not anticipate. So Africa is lost, then he asked, already knowing full well what the response would be. Yes, my Führer. And frankly, it is not an asset that we will find the opportunity to recover. Even once the situation at home is secure. To attempt to bring Africa back into the fold, if I may be frank, it would be a fool's expedition, Schmidt replied. To some, Schmidt's words would border upon de defeatism. defeatism. But Speer understood that Reich's minister was correct. Schmidt was generous in calling Africa an asset. In truth, it was an administrator's nightmare, and nothing but an overextended imperial fantasy. Very well. Issue our official condemnation, and let the dog have his bone. He will choke on it soon enough. The African Empire will not last. Now let them starve for supplies, because I don't want to lose too many more men. Because our men, we're going to need a lot of men. Oh, they're starting to starve. I'm not even going to turn our tanks that way. Our tanks will be more focused on taking out Breslau. Um, actually, uh, yeah, I don't want to focus on the riverside. Your goal is to get to Breslau. Because, oh, actually we lost the soldiers in Königsberg. That sucks. Oh, no wonder our casualties are so high. But, hey, more than 2 to 1 casual rate, casualty ratio. Not too bad. Go ahead. Let them rip into there. 5, 4, just go. We're all going to go ahead. You guys don't have plans? Don't I give you plans? Oh, my goodness. I am so stupid. Why did I not do that? Well, they've opted 42 divisions left. They're done. They're done. Oh, hello. Um, That's fine. I, they kind of united back there, but whatever. International Condor Battalion. Can we beat these guys within 10 days without doing this? We might be able to, actually. It doesn't even really matter, but we'll try it. That's a lot of dudes. That is really quite a lot. Why is no one up here? American advisors arrived, men from the U.S. government. More specifically, some of their veteran advisors have landed in Speer-controlled territory. It seems like they have agreed to a proposal. Now we must put these men to work. Though we're not necessarily planning to adopt American-style tactics or strategy on a large scale, it is a painful truth that their army is more in touch with present-day military doctrine than ours. We should put these advisors to work immediately. Time to crack the whip. Ah, even more attack would be great. And we're in. We've taken Breslau. Let me guess Königsberg's the last city. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, Stolp is. All right, so I'm not sure what our guys are doing here. But it's not ideal. If that's the case, we can read one more. We should expand our efforts to draw in more foreign volunteers to help us fight. Say whatever we need to say to draw more men. We are fighting for a democratic society. We're fighting to destroy the hardliner Nazis. We're putting down the dreaded SS once and for all. Whatever. Promise them anything. If it brings us more fighters, then it is worth it. So be it. Losses. Eh, a lot of dead Germans, but yeah, what else is new? Never mind. Okay, we didn't even have to do that one. And now we're going to glitch. Opposing captured. If you like to read about that, please go ahead. 
What about those fanatics? I'll let them starve. They aren't going anywhere. Spider surrenders! There was some tension in war-torn Germany while Speer supporters and the populace of Germania both awaited news of whether or not Spider would allow his entrance into the city. A collective sigh of relief answered, however, when it was announced that Spider and Rommel's men would not protest Speer's entrance in the city and give the soldiers and gave the soldiers guarding it their first standout order since the war had begun. Soon Speer will ride to the Reichstag personally to announce his victory, and the celebrations have already broken out across Germania as cheering crowds have mingled with the finally off-duty soldiers, lifting them on shoulders onto every pub and beer hall in the city. While the war hasn't spared Germania completely and supplies are scarce, it seems that the people have enough spare to truly celebrate the occasion. Three cheers hurrah! If after this event you are unable to select or assign any divisions or units, simply save and reload your game. This is base game bug, tax switching, cool! Anyone wondering about Katowice? Please go ahead. Cool! And time to lag very hard for things to tag switch and get a little more annexation. <sighs> Isn't he handsome? Alright, now we've got an annual deficit. That does not feel good. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, yeah, not bad. You can cut that down, too. Wow, that's cost a lot of money. We have 71 divisions, which I think from my, what I heard before, like, eventually we're not going to have this many divisions. Like, we'll have, like, army restrictions. So I'll be honest, I'm not 100% sure at the time of this recording how it's going to work with us going down several different routes. But we will see what happens. It's weird. We still have SS divisions here, huh? Cool. Buyer line. Very good. Very good. Um, split you guys in half. That's fine. Split you guys in half. That's fine. Boom. And then split you guys in half. Boom. 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 Give you some generals just because we want to like see people here. And there you go. And then there you grow. Von Stauffenberg. Oh. Oh, um, that was another comment from the last video. Says. All of our generals or Speer's generals that were like, they died following Operation Valkyrie in our timeline, except Stauffenberg went with Bormann, but now we got Stauffenberg. Some, hmm. Alright, whatever, whatever. Uh, we'll put you guys against these guys, just in case. Just just because I don't I don't really trust uh, that that guy, mad guy over there. So, it is what it is. A dockyard, just go make some convoys, it doesn't matter. How about a focus? Doppel Denken. The Reich is the greatest nation the world has ever seen, yet has become feeble and weary. Its people unite in the Volksgemeinschaft, are ever faithful Aryans, proud children of the Germanic race, and yet we've just spent months tearing ourselves apart over ideological differences. Mr. Adolf Hitler was an infallible Fuhrer, the wisest and strongest ruler in history. A true messiah of the German nation, but a weakness has, was born from his mistakes. In our hearts, we know ourselves to be the undisputed masters of the world, but the powers of Japan and the U.S. further eclipse our glory with every passing day. National socialism made us great but national socialism was a catalyst for a decline. The system is broken, to us inefficient, and it's all we've got. Never has it been more apparent than the Reich must change. Hitler's ideals, good and bad, brought us to this point. How can we ever abandon them? It'd be madness, yes, but for all their genius, where is our everlasting victory? Why, if the fear was infallible, are we so benighted? And feeble, change must come, but it would go against everything that makes the Reich what it is. We cannot betray the Reich, but the state of it ensures that the German people suffer under economic strain and violent division. Still, I can solve this. I alone, no obstacle, can be permitted to stand in my way, not even the truth. Guns. Infinite guns. All right, is that all we have right now? Oh, this is all that the uh, AI thought would be necessary. The AI is kind of stupid, but that's all right. CVs and jet cast cool. And I think we have some um, transport helicopters and as well some of these guys. Five, five, five. Well, go three, three, five. That's not too bad. And we'll throw on. I don't know. I don't really care. There you go. Cool. And what are we making? Why are we making nuclear reactors here? I do not understand. But what we will be making is a lot of civvies to begin. And actually, before we let time go on, I do need to read the decision tab. And yeah, we own that one. I forgot what name that is. But that's cool. And just build, 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 build. Civvies for the GDP for now. Cool. And loads of infrastructure. I love how big Germany is. It's so nice. Because eventually we'll be able to build even more civvies here too. More millies, civvies. What do we need? Because now it is a whole lot of reading and a narrative adventure for all of us here together. Cool. And Veen. Don't want to forget Veen. All right. Oh, look at this. And we have court armor, which is nice. And we hit integration. Open the indus German industry GUI. Click on states for further interaction. Zola Verein GDP. All right. Corresponds to economic wealth and currently lies at 6.24 billion. With the German Germany sphere being way bigger. Wow. Its mean growth rate lies at 0.1% in international recognition or negotiations. A high Zollverein GDP will make the Reich more attractive to investors and business partners. 
the GDP's growth is directly impacted by an increasing skilled workforce ratio, currently 12.3%, and the reduction of an eventual abolition of slavery. Oh, we need... Oh, boy. Ah, oh, Helman Yosef Abs. Oh, you got a long cigar. Cool, if you wonder about him, please go ahead. The largest asset of an empire that spans a Deutsche Bank and many dozens more companies. He's not a member of the party, actually. He was quite distant. Interesting. We have Reichswerke. Oops, oh, I can't do one yet. Oh... Once a company powers at 0% and focus pass is passed and taken, he's led by Edwin Geilenberg. We also have Dalmer Benz. He looks very unhappy. Led by Friedrich Flick. All right. And then Siemens. Led by Ernst von Siemens. Well, which makes sense. Cool, cool, cool. And there you go. If you're about that, please go right ahead. Click on states for further interaction. Um, oh, we have a lot of slaves here. That's true. IG Farben, Dalmer Benz, Reichswerke. We have 20 million slaves. All right. Skilled workforce, 8.274 million. So we want to get more skilled workforce, remove slavery, and then do that one, depending on what we want. Oh, what does this one say? Oh, economic overview. Holy crap. Economic overview, 461 billion, 383 billion, 74. Wow. Wow, we suck. We suck. Um, let's get some research done first, then. It is 64 still, so not too bad. I think we're making excellent progress. And we'll come over here. So, we have the State of the Reich. The regime currently leans conservative. Now, I I don't know this exactly. And I'm sure you guys in the comments will help me out with this. But, I think we got to go, like, full conservative maybe once. Or, you can go either extremely conservative, you can go balanced, or extremely reform-minded, which we're going to need a lot of PP or something like that. State propaganda. Uh, regime stability. is paramount for the longevity of the Führer's government. It is affected by controversial decisions, including conservative or reformist actions when the social outlook is at the respective opposite, as well as national stability, which it takes forwards. Should regime stability fall below 30%, the government may collapse and we might get cooed. Uh, outlook is regressing at minus 3.54%. Oh, hold a speech. Um, oh boy. Okay, so our stability is not great. We can hold a speech. A token of political promises, more daily fascist support, regime stability will increase by 5%. I get some pee, pee out of that too. Actually, that's not too bad. And vast political promises. Oh boy. Oh boy. So, oh, and show pact related decisions. To recreating the Einheits Pact. Oh, the Dutch problem. Meeting with the Dutch, Denmark. Oh my goodness. I just don't know. Obviously, set. The campaign will be set to focus on conservative propaganda. Focusing on conservative propaganda will increase the regime's tick into conservatism, regress social outlook, and increase regime stability. I think from right here, this is a defining moment where we're going to maybe separate the campaign, maybe. Yeah, it's probably best to start doing this now. So, I'll see you in just a little bit. All right, everyone. So, with this part of the campaign, as you can tell by the title, we are going to try to go reformist. And see what happens. Increase budget by $2 million, granting the following prospective bonuses. More weekly stability growth. Regime leaning. How much money can we spend? Oh, up to $10 million of political power. Increase political power by 20, granting the following prospective bonuses. Is that going to hurt us? That's probably going to hurt us. And we're going to go reform focus. Launch a campaign. Political modifier gain amount. More weekly stability. Social outlook progression 2. Reform regime tick 5. And I'll see what happens. Alright, so. It's regressing at minus 3.52. And Austin is kind of killing itself. Uh, it's probably a good time to go through the other comments as well. Oh, and a little bit of lag. What's going on? I don't think they have uh, the African devastation yet, do they? But some comments. Um, Someone says, I didn't wait until Toolbox 3 basically to play as Spare, which probably would have been a good idea. But after Toolbox 3 comes out, because we're not using Toolbox 3 right now, we will be going with... Uh, Playing Spear again, probably, just to see what his uh, tree is like. So, we're making divisions? Um, AI, I think we're okay with what we've got right now. We probably don't need to do that. Currently, two, two political power a day. God dang. Of course, this is not very good. Conservative support is minus some. Uh, it's set to focus on reformist propaganda. That's good. That's good, good, good. Regime stability. Uh, uh, we can probably do this one. We need to shore up the stability of the regime and get people to calm down right now. Whatever we can say, whatever we can promise, whatever will get the people's attention towards us and away from our enemies will do it. The reactionaries and the dissenters who question us on feasibility, well, we'll just have to do it without them. Cool. And actually, what party? Are we just like... We're just fascists. Okay. Oberland is a national daddyist. Oh, and there's some red here, too. Libertarian socialist. Unbekannt. Cool. Oh, uh, yeah, I already talked about uh, Speer's generals and basically Operation Valkyrie. Someone says I should make Lib 
Oslin win, it would be interesting to see what would happen. Well, we could, but I just kind of want to let things run out or run through for now. But, uh, do we just want to read... Regime stability increased by 10%. Why not? Speer is victorious. From the steps of the Reichstag today, Speer has announced he has finally secured his place as a Fuhrer of Germany. Armored soldiers from Stauffenberg's 6th Panzer Division and hundreds of armed militia fighters who had taken him to Germania surrounded the Reich's new leader as he announced he would be bringing Germany to a new era of prosperity and enlightenment. While well, hundreds of thousands filled the streets in celebration for the new leader and an end to the blo most bloody conflict Germany has ever been embroiled in, some skirmishes still continue across the nation as the followers of Speer's enemies have refused to give up the fight, despite their losses refusing to accept Speer as the next leader. Still, Speer's speech has re reached acclaim not only in Germany, but has, it has become the most televised broadcast in our nation in decades, but around the world as well. It's not enough to dream of a strong Germany. We must believe in a strong Germany. We must strive for a stronger Germany. We will shine a light in the dark and will be a beacon for our children and their children as they remember us as the ones who made a strong, brave, beautiful new world for them to inherit. A new era has begun. Ah, Speer. Oh, he looks... He looks like he's, he's seen some stuff, man. Hide pact related decisions. Uh, that's not really good. Social outlook 45.8. Uh, and we're definitely kind of trying to boom this way. So, regime alignment currently is a reformist 4.8 per month and a conservative pivot. Alright, reformist focus, please. Launch campaign. We did that one already. Do Doppel Denken. Okay, so whenever I do the cons more like radical conservative route, if I do that one, which I probably will actually, um, we'll probably go ahead and uh, uh, do what not read through these, but for now we will. On the streets of Germany, uh, yeah, we'll do this one. In the halls of Germania first. A new Fuhrer is, of course, everything the German people wish a Fuhrer to be. Strong, iron-willed, a true-hearted ideologue, and unquestionably loyal to the national socialist ideals, and a little bit handsome. Reigning from the high halls of the Reich Chancellor, Albert Speer follows in the footsteps of Monty Hitler. Never shall he betray what the Reich stands for or see it to f uh, fall to ruin. Yet the mightiest of leaders and needs associates, friends, and loyal servants, long before his triumph over the false Fuhrers, Speer drew forth a clique of like-minded men, reformers who wish to see its vision for the Reich fulfilled, and yet, the precise location of their own loyalties are entirely up to debate. Kurt Jörg Kiesinger, Helmut Schmidt, Ludwig Erhard, K Henning von Thresco, the Gang of Four, these men are dissenters. They would be tried as traitors by anyone else. They are regarded as barely loyal to national daddyism at best. Yet they are the Führers, chosen men at least, the last, best hope of and for Germany. Re regime stability increased by 5%, which is not too bad. And then, let's go and read the next one, because we're pretty close. On the streets of Germany. Celebrations engulfed Germany on a scale not seen since their defeat of the Bolsheviks in the Second World War. Not even the devastating losses can, and ruination of the Bürgerkrieg can mute the joyous outpourings of the desperate, disillusioned, and destitute. Rightfully so. For if our Fuhrer and his dream of reform had not triumphed, all of the Reich would undoubtedly be cast into darkness forevermore. Still, this euphoria, while good for PR, is a double-edged sword amidst the drinking and insensate joy that remains unsavory elements, students of forbidden literature and ideals who have become emboldened by the defeat of the hardline Nazism and militarism. We must begin to reign in the people before the intoxication becomes a catalyst for radicalization and the letter of penance. I should have you shot, dog. The uncommon spark of fury within Speer's voice only prompted a smile from Shona, who felt pain shoot through his back as he was slammed against the wall by two Oracle agents. Cold concrete running across the length of his thin coat. Speer, meanwhile, stood two meters away, carrying with him a loaded pistol as well as a menacing glare in his eyes and his gaze. You are one of the worst traitors to the Reich, and by all accounts, I should have you executed here and now, he continued, pulling back the hammer of the gun as Shona could see the round, smooth black of the barrel pointing down at him. The silence that came from Shona's emphasized, the small cough he gave afterwards, ringing insultingly and throughout the bland and empty room, and he felt the sun flood his neck with warmth as he craned his head up to look his spare. Well then, go on! He said, lips parting to reveal a small victorious grin, kill me, start another civil war. I am certain the militarists will accept whatever judgment you pass. The burning sarcasm tightened Speer's grip on the pistol and a finger itched to slip into the trigger zone. Yet, it didn't. Perhaps you can even quarter and draw me, then they would cheer, wouldn't they? A defiant gaze followed a sudden sharp and louder tone, wouldn't they, Herr Speer? Speer, grimaced so hard he felt like his teeth would shatter. In a moment of anger, a tired hand swung cold steel toward Shona's head, slamming him and leaving a heavy bruise on the grinning man's face. Release him, Speer ordered, and Shona felt his limbs lighten. And get the heck out of my sight, I don't want to look at you until things stabilize. Blood poured from the cut inside his cheek, and Shona spat staining Speer's shirt with red. Gladly, my Fuhrer. 
Oh, the Nuremberg Rede. With Germany finally calming down a bit, people are beginning to take stock of our situation and they see little alike. Despite the obvious fact that Speer cannot simply click his fingers and fix all of Germany's problems, the more ungrateful elements of the populace are already accusing him of failing up to live up to his promises. Never mind the fact that the entire Reich is a smoking ruin, they already clamor for protest action and disobedience to the Fuhrer. Perhaps much of this unrest can be traced back to Speer's relative silence following the victory. He has even, not even issued a formal victory speech yet, which particularly worries the reformists and the Wehrmacht. Wishing to rectify the situation, the Fuhrer has accepted the recommendations of his subordinates and will shortly announce a formal parade victory, or victory parade, to be held in Nuremberg. He will take the opportunity to speak on the matter of his reforms, his plans for the future, and his gratitude to the people for delivering him victory in the Bürgerkrieg. Hey, 47.2, not too bad. Social ally conservative is getting worse, is regressing. Uh, as measure the German people's views on the world, depending on the factors including economic reform, regime leaning, and more, change over time. Should the government's leaning be the opposite of it, regime stability will begin to drop. So we really need to get the social outlook a little bit better. Hmm. So that's dumber. The Dutch problem. I kind of want to do one of these already. Hold a speech. Oh, that seems okay. Five. More daily fascist support. We do get, basically, you lose five political power for this. So we can't forget about the base of support for our regime. The students, intellectuals, everyone who fought and died for their hopes for a brighter future. If only to calm them down, we will promise them token reforms. I kind of do it with this too. I wonder... Huh. Well, maybe we'll do this then. Heims in the Reich, Böhmen in Maren. For over two decades, the economic and political situation in the German Reich has seen Bohemia and Moravia stand firmly to the side as a loyal protectorate. The chaotic upheaval of the Bürgerkrieg has blasted the winds of change throughout much of Europe, and now the time has come to rethink its current status. Let's see what that about. Let's do one of them. I don't know. If it doesn't go well, then we'll, well, I'll fix things up. So, uh, no, thank you. Wow, we're importing a lot of steel. Just build them civvies, son. Build, build, build. Promises for the future, aid for the present. Oh, that'd be probably really good to do. No amount of idealism can address the dire situation that most of Germany's citizens find themselves in. The Reich is a complete wreck. Not even our core territories were safe in the era of strategic bombing and long-range missiles. The Bürger Krieg is over, but our people are still dying from disease and starvation. This tragedy cannot continue on German soil. Our Führer, filled with compassion for the deprived and misfortunate, has decried by Führer directive the immediate establishment of a general aid program to end the suffering of the people. Food, medicine, water, and electricity are all in short supply in many regions. The Wehrmacht will assist with the distribution of supplies by truck, railway, and airplane, while there are pioneer divisions. We'll make short work of demolition and construction work. Every German, big and small, will come together to rebuild our beloved home. Broken mirrors. The Reich's council eye was dark. The silent corridors and empty offices were an almost eerie sight along sh long shadows cast by the moonlight in pitch black corners, but a single light dispelled the ominous atmosphere. Helmut Schmidt was still in his office, working on the latest diplomatic documents when he realized he had long since passed the closing hour. He was very tired and perhaps just a bit tipsy from the liquor he drank to keep himself awake with a yawn. He turned off the light and looked at the... From the window at the sleeping Germany, how different it was from Hamburg, so big and strange. Still thinking about his home, he made to leave the office, but perhaps by chance he looked at the mirror near the room's entrance, and wished he had never done it. His figure was dark, but a single moon ray illuminated the very thing they didn't want to see. The red band with a swastika, the symbol of all the members of the NSDAP, including him. Disgust crept from his feet at that cursed thing and at himself for wearing it every single day. He immediately went to remove it as if burned, but stopped when he heard a voice. Why are you trying to remove it? His own reflection told him, sneering in the dark mirror. You can't lie to yourself. You like it. Admit it. After a moment of complete befuddlement, he replied, anger flowing from his voice, I don't. I'm doing it for everyone to build a better tomorrow. Oh, I'm no, 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 no. Liar, the shadows replied as they took shape behind him, a severe visage so sim familiar to him. Similar to him. Father? Look at what you have done, Helmut, Gustav Ludwig Schmidt said, disappointment heavy in his aged features. You live among them, smile at them, shake their hands. You betrayed us. You are no son of mine. I'm I'm doing it for... Liar, screamed the father. Liar, laughed at his reflection. Liar, 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 cried a thousand shadows swirling around him. With a loud crash, the mirror went into pieces when Schmidt threw his briefcase at it, and suddenly the spell broke, trembling, crying. The diplomat looked around himself in fear, but only silence met his gaze. He fell to his knees, hugging himself, repeating the same phrase as if he could shield him from everything. I'm doing it for everyone. I'm doing it for everyone. I'm going insane. A new future for German culinary arts. It's hard to make out at first as the screen cleared up, but within the monochrome kitchen was a traditional German woman. My, I need to prepare food for the family, she exclaimed. I must prepare the food. Tools first, however. First things first, she began reaching in for a knife. After doing so, the camera panned to showcase some fruit. I need to cut the fruit, she muttered, setting the knife down and beginning to dig into the food. After a few seconds, she let out an annoyed side and pulled the knife out. It showed barely any progress. Darn it! Well, I have to check on the plates and see if they're clean. 
Reaching down, she grabbed two plates in both hands and turned around to show them to the camera. Surprise and disgust mixed in her face as she looked at them. Cracks, she said, groaning as she stared at the damaged plates. And these were perfectly fine just yesterday. What sounded like a door opening was heard from the side and a deeper male voice interjected. Honey, he happily exclaimed and she jolted a little, setting the plates down and walking over as the camera panned to her husband, who was carrying a large box. I noticed the quality of her silverware and decided to take a look into the nearby store to see what they were selling at. Oh, you cannot believe it. Can I? The wife asked, motioning for the box to be settled down on the ki kitchen desk. What makes this one stand out so much? The husband chuckled and pointed towards a small label on the back. The camera zoomed in and it said, Made with all German hands. She raised her eyebrows. Wow, you, you mean to tell me that this was all made by German workers? He nodded. In a German factory? He nodded again. Paid a fair living wage by German employers? One last time, he nodded again, and she smiled, turning towards the camera and crossing her arms. That's it, then. I'm never buying goods made by four hands again. Only free and happy ones, but approaching the Bohemians. Oh, boy. The Reichsprotector Ludgraf Schweren von Krosik. The Reich has long considered Protector Bowman and Marlin to be one of the most successful Germanization projects, as you know. The purpose of the Protector is to pacify the uh, local population and, through the various means available to them, make it so that they are either phased out for the ethnic Germans or educated to the point that we can call them proper Aryans. It has mainly been the second, and it has been a great success at that. The Protectorate, then, has succeeded in its objective. I will consider it now to be a viable territory for the, to be annexed directly into the Glorious Reich. I am hopeful that you understand my reasoning for this, Herr Lutz, and that you will comply with my request, which I am certain would not come as a major difficulty for you. Your service has been valuable, and now the next step must be taken. Heims in the Reich. Herr Lutz, Fürschbeer, let us see how they react and the Nuremberg speech, my people. Sons and daughters of Deutschland, the trials we have faced over the past three decades have never been greater than anything faced by any other nation in history. Never before has an entire empire defeated so many foes and risen to such heights, only to be laid low again in such a short period of time. Since the passing of our beloved Führer, our suffering has only increased with each passing day. Thirty years ago, none could possibly have imagined that such privation and misery would befall the German people, and yet, here we stand, knee-deep in the blood of our own kin. How could it have come to this? How could we, the most noble and brotherly of nations, tear ourselves apart so suddenly and violently? The answer is plain for the rest of the world to see, but we ourselves have been blinded by petty rivalries and stagnation of our glory. Germany, we failed. We failed to see the writing in the wall to accept that the old ways served us no longer. We failed to remember that national socialism is a movement of the people, not a rigid dogmatic tool of bureaucrats, militarists, and purist fanatics. People of Germany, we cannot, will not, return to the same path that led us to the brink of destruction once before. A time has come for change. Change we can believe in. National Socialism and its representatives must serve the people first. And I swear that it shall. No more will you be asked to die for reasons you do not understand. No more will you be deprived of your bread by a faceless, stone-hearted bureaucrat. No more will the black stain of fanaticism be welcome in our great nation. The people's war is ended now. Begins the people's Reich. Siegheil. Germany is not yet lost. Uh, oh, social outlook conservative. Oh, that's not good, man. Regressing. Oh, boy. The regime currently learns conservative. Ah, oh, here we go. Alignment of reformists, 4.75 a month. So that should be getting better, right? Or maybe not. Uh, so it says conservative here. Outlook is regressing. It's The amount we're regressing is going smaller and smaller. So it's eventually going to pick up, hopefully, for us. Wow, we lost a lot of stability already. Holy crap. Open the ports? Yes. For a long time, our ports have seen few ships belonging to nations outside the Einheit's Pact. The mutual embargoes between ourselves and every other global power helped us demonstrate our economic strength in the past, but now their price has become apparent. When the economic crash first hit, the lack of imports and exports was a serious blow, but the Bürgerkrieg's devastation has stripped away any credibility that Altarki retained. Germany is the mightiest nation on earth, but we cannot allow its suffering to continue any longer than is necessary. Through th though the conservatives still balk at the notion, we must open up our ports to international trade and let the world know that our people are in need of aid. There's no shame in admitting that the German bleeds like any other race. It does not infringe on the glory or superiority of our nation. We are only being realistic. Why should we turn away help if it is offered in good faith? Maybe, maybe I shouldn't have done reformers focus yet. Oh boy. Maybe I should not have. Because... Because I guess this one really hurts us, maybe? Huh. Hold a speech. Though many consider the students to be the backbone of Albert Schwer's support, it is the NSDAP that is a sword of Damocles hanging above him. With his chariz charisma and political acumen, however, he can put on a dazzling display to appease some of the more pliable members. We might as well, because we're going to need that. Alright, and then, mistakes of the past. Show the crimes. Suspend the persecution. Or end Aryan lineage studies. Ooh, that's, okay, we definitely have to go to that one for this time. But, 
That's your promise to the future for political power, because we're going to need that. No further delays can be afforded. Though Speer's conservative backers still hesitate, the Fuhrer recognizes that he must act immediately to suppress dissent, beginning with the process of reform and satisfy supporters. We must waste no time implementing the groundwork of all future legislation and reorganization of the Reich. The Reichstag will not be by the means by which this is done, however. Formal legislative efforts will have to wait until the NSDAP is firmly under the Fuhrer's control for now. We should instead focus on spreading Speerite influence far and wide, assigning trusted men to positions of authority and important bureaucratic offices. Reforms will only be achieved through careful consideration and planning. You can't blood your way through bureaucracy. The humanitar humanitarian crisis. Though the war is over, the still the fatherland suffers, unfortunately. And with a lot of deficit, oh boy, and that GDP growth, oh, not great. To speak of the scars of war is erroneous. Germany is rent apart, apart, with the lifeblood of the nation dripping endlessly from gruesome, gaping wounds. To deal with only scars will be a comparative luxury instead. We find ourselves cleaning up after one of the worst civil wars in European history. Not since the Thirty Years' War has Germany been so thoroughly devastated and deprived. In every city, lines of citizens awaiting their rations stretch for block after block. Electricity is still completely cut off in several large areas, running much of our infrastructure useless and communication across the nation impossible. In regions where the fighting was most intense, even running water was a rarity. Living conditions and standards were already low before the Burger Creek, but now they are virtually non-existent. To alleviate this unprecedented humanitarian crisis, the Fuhrer and his government have greenlit the immediate distribution of storage supplies to the people. Anything the military has no use for will be bundled into the aid package, food, water, medicine, fuel. If it has value and is not a weapon, the people need it. Of all the tragedies to befall Germany, none could possibly surpass our current situation. Enough of this nonsense talk of austerity and spartanism. Germany cries out for salvation, and the Fuhrer will deliver it unto them, no matter the opposition, as such is his love for the people. Thank you, mein Fuhrer, and the Bohemian demands. This letter is to be addressed to the current Fuhrer, Abbot Speer. I greet you warmly, der Fuhrer, leader of the Reich, the thousand-year empire, the eagle that soars above Europa. I will gladly accept entry into Germania, seeing as how my leadership of this protectorate has led to it being established as almost entirely Germanized. There is, however, one issue that remains which both you and I must confront. There's been an issue going forward. Or going around. A very strange one at that. We both know the SS, the cancer that manifests itself as Odenstadt Bergen, but also as smaller tumors that spread across Europe. They have spread here too, but fortunately the Czech Guard has, under the leadership of Rudolf Tussant, beaten back this nest of degeneracy. For that, Rudolf has called for a special proposal to be made. For their efforts, he desires for the Czechs to immediately be recognized as honorary Aryans. My fear, it is only with you I would have even bothered sending this proposal back to you, for you are an understanding leader. It is my hope that you accept this compromise in order for the protector to be now and forever fully integrated into the Reich. Heil! Reichs Protector Lutz, Lutz Graf Schweren von Krasik. Nothing but a small bear who does not bend to the conquered? Um, It seems like we'll probably go with this one. Nothing but a small barrier. So let's go with that one, maybe. Let's see. The Dutch problem. I want to do these, you know, when we can. The model colony sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, we got to get some of these. I don't know if we should do these yet now, or... I'm not really sure, but promises of the future... All who fought? Yes. Despite the calls of conservatism, militarism, and SS, tens of thousands of soldiers remain loyal to Speer. They saw the wretchedness of the its cause and the deplorable nature of the pretenders. These steadfast defenders of national daddyism found a ready ally in the citizens of Germany, who flocked to the standard in great numbers to stand for freedom no matter their experience. None of our enemies on the Burger Creek could call upon such a brave and reliable militia, demonstrating without question that the hearts of all true Germans were with Speer, the rightful Führer of the Reich. We will not forget our soldiers, as the Weimar Republic did, neither the enlisted men nor their regulars. In addition to special commendations and medals being produced for the militia forces, each and every one of our soldiers will be granted a special badge, forever setting them above their disloyal comrades. Furthermore, they will be granted an increased pension and first priority for promotions, militia figures, and fighters. Provided they registered formally, of course, will also be granted a basic pension to show our eternal gratitude with higher rates for exemplary men and women, and the Bohemians have accepted. This letter is to be addressed to the current Führer Abbot Speer. These past three days have been worrisome, I fear. Ever since I received your letter, there have been chaos in the government. Panic struck many of our people, but I can say for certain that I have kept a clear head of these times. Immense pressure has been put on me from Rudolph to continue negotiating these terms eventually. However, I forced his hand and he had to back down after a fierce argument we recently had. I read this letter to you now regarding the concerns between the Reich and the Protectorate with a simple sentence, we accept. More lands to the Empire. And that should help our GDP, right? It does. That's actually really nice. Thank you. I'm not sure that's the right one to do, but we did anyways. So, honorary Aryans, I guess. So, I hope, I hope we're doing I hope, I hope we're doing right. I don't want to do mistakes of the past, but to all who worked. Victory in the Burger Creek was won not only by our generals and their brave troops, but by the ordinary men and women toiling away in the factories of the Rhineland. Day and night, those who could not fight still found a way to commit themselves to the rightful Fuhrer's 
war effort. Rewards in line with those granted to the troops are in order. Pensions for life, tax breaks, and decorations for service to the nation. We must not forget those whose lot it was to work regardless, due to our heartland in the war being the Rhineland. Millions of slaves fell under our jurisdiction. Though they could have taken the risk against our army and their guards, they continued their important work with renewed vigor thanks to the fierce promises. Though there were always a few radicals who had to be dealt with, the majority of slaves performed admirably. No doubt, buoyed by the respected and humane approach of our kind Fuhrer, any other self proclaimed Fuhrer would have worked those un these unfortunates to death in the pursuit of victory. Their loyalty to the Reich has been decisively proven and should be rewarded. The Rhineland's own slaves will be recognized or reorganized into the Führer's own loyal labor divisions. They will be granted better housing, better, higher quality rations, less oversight, and can expect particularly favorable treatment when the time comes to implement the Führer's labor reforms. Perhaps we, sh we should even open up our general promotion to these divisions given appropriate behavior. Alright, so now we're 50%, which is an looks nice, but token promises? Yeah. I guess we keep doing that one because we need it. I mean, it's only we lose 5 PP. So that's not too bad. That looks pretty good. I do want to do the Dutch problem, though. Our Germanic brethren in the Netherlands have torn themselves away from the security of the Reich, shockingly claim that their total independence despite Europe's cries of protestation. We'll attempt to reintegrate the Dutch back into the Einheit's Pact, and we'll see what happens. Wow, that looks really bad. Um, uh, maybe we should have done more here? Oh, I don't know. Progression 2, Reform Regime Tech 5? Uh, am I, am, did I go too radical already? I don't know. We'll see what happens. And the Aryan Lineage Studies. The fixation of the Reich on racial purity has gone completely out of hand. The Ahnpass, documents issued to certify the Aryan heritage of the individuals, is widely disliked by Speer supporters. The Fuhrer himself would profess that their objections are based on the additional layer of red tape it adds to employment and education opportunities. But none can deny the increasingly loud moral objections to it as well, particularly within Speer's cabinet. Although a radical move like that is likely to enrage the NSDAP and especially the SS sympathizers. Abolishing laws pertaining to the monitoring of racial hygiene is a bullet that we must bite for the sake of our future. It is time to move on from our ideological obsessions and focus on what will produce a better world for all citizens of the Reich. Oh, we lose political power. Oh, no. Costing us five. Oh, this is so bad. Why do we want to do this? I don't want to do that. Well, we can't do that one yet because we got to go over here first, but... Mistakes of the past. It has been too long since the true justice had a home in the Reich for decades. All manner of criminal scum has held the nation's heart in a vice grip, squeezing the life out of Germany for their own benefit. Abuse of power, blackmail, corruption, debauchery, treason, even murder have been rife within the bureaucracy, the Wehrmacht, and the NSDAP. The entire upper echelon of national socialism is infested with criminality. It now falls to us to cleanse the Reich of this rot. The Führer has publicly condemned all such crime and corruption, proclaiming that anyone who perpetuate them or participated in them in the past will face the full power of the law. No enemy of the people will be on our reach, nor will any enemies of the Führer for that matter. Well, 59% is pretty good, but the Great Hungarian Game. Oh, oh, we got to see. If you want to read about this, please go ahead. I forgot about this was going to happen. And we're on the left. Reconnect with old friends. We lose PP. Uh, I guess we have to. We need more army XP for this. We are training a lot of guys, so we should get some more of that and the change to come. Theodor Oberlander sat in a chair facing the most powerful man in Europe. Albert Speer sat at a desk facing a legislator who irritated him to his core. Neither man particularly liked his company, my Fuhrer, Oberlander began, boldly yet deferentially. Surely you are not truly considering the repeal of the Nuremberg Laws. The party would riot and so would the corporations. Such a drastic action so quickly after the war seems to be, at least to me, somewhat unwise. Speer I, the president of the Reichstag, what was he getting at? Herr Oberlander, I am sure you know where my support base is drawn from. The Nuremberg system of racial discrimination has done nothing but weaken the Reich. For years, Oberlander had been just as harshly critical of the Nuremberg laws as the reformists. Had he truly, fully succumbed to party line just to spite Speer? Mein Führer, you must understand. I do not propose that we continue the policy, only the laws behind it. Oberlander withdrew a fold, which he slid across the table to Speer and closed my Führer. You will find several reports of from myself, on the heritage of the Eastern European population. At the time of the Nuremberg Laws, these were widely considered Slavic and Fury peoples. However, this research has shown that a high proportion of them previously known is, in fact, of Nordic stock, and as such, of proper Aryan genealogy. Speer nodded, suddenly understanding the President's suggestion if this report were to come to light, the Nuremberg Laws may need to be un taken under a period of review, during this period, of course. The persecution of Untermenschen will need to be temporarily halted to ensure no Aryans are unwittingly harmed. Speer eyed the President of the Reichstag. Perhaps Oberlander was more crafty than Speer had given him credit for. He must be watched closely. Meeting with the Dutch. There is much reason for Germany to rejoice with the Civil War over, and the heart of the Reich secured under the banner of the new leader, Daddy Albert Speer. For the reunification of the Volk, however, there remain many battles still to be won. The Germanic people of Europe are divided, scattered across the continent, a stark contrast to Hitler's Grand Alliance system, and a definite liability to the new regime in Germania. To the West, Germany's brothers in Holland have yet to rejoin the pact, leaving both the Vaterland and the Netherlands in a precarious position for the new Fuhrer and Foreign Minister Schmidt. 
re-entry of Holland has become a diplomatic priority and negotiations with H.A. St. Clair de Rochemont and the rest of the Hague, or Hague are being planned within Spiel's cabinet. There's much uncertainty about the coming meeting, but on the outside, Germany's head of state is all smiles and waves to the people. He reaffirmed this confidence to the public before he and his plane departed from Germania, ensuring the Volkischer Beobachter a quote for the headline. The Dutch know where the blood belongs. Guter Eis, mein Führer. I really wonder if people actually knew me in real life and they, like, heard me, like, speak about all this stuff and all this positivity out of context. I think it'd be kind of wild. Uh, I, I don't want to do these yet until we get, like, the Dutch one done. I'm not sure we need to do it yet, but I want to do one at a time. But sure, the crimes. Bowman, Goring, Hadrish, these men. Well, he's... Hatred is handsome. Each who claimed to be the, to the world, he was the sole rightful Führer of the great, ge, greater German Reich. Steeped in crime and bloodshed, these three men were responsible for untold suffering over the past 30 years of national socialist rule. How many times did they corrupt the will of our Führer for their own ends or crush innocent Germans underfoot in pursuit of glory? The true Führer, Albert Speer, will be remembered for many things. Restoring justice to Germany will be first among them. Marfos, meanwhile, will go down in the history books as the greatest criminals in Germany's history. They were more dangerous than any external foe we've ever faced, and it's only right that every German child learns the full extent of their evil, that they might never slip from the path of true national socialism. And a brotherhood, a Germanic brotherhood. Was he certain once? He wasn't certain and he wasn't now. Decades under the doctrine of any belief can push the faith of any man, especially the smart ones, and if anything, Speer certainly considered, him, considered himself clever. It was precisely this intelligence which commanded Speer to appeal to the Dutch reactionaries through race in his negotiations in his speech. To a collection of statesmen in the political capital of the Netherlands, the Führer connected the philosophical genius of the Dutch Descartes and Voltius with the German Leibniz and Goethe. He connected the diplomatic centrality of the Hague with Bismarck's focus on alliances and peace. Both nations, Speer went on shared a common history of honorable monarchies and fair republics, feudal states, and global empires. Truly, there was a unique and profound link at the level of blood that connected the Dutch and the Germans in a genetic brotherhood. At this conclusion, a raucous applause erupted from the gathered crowd in the Binnenhof. Speer wasn't certain about the Jews, but... He was certain that Europe did have an inferior subhuman infesting it. The proud Aryans of Speer's homeland clung on to every word of Germanic superiority that emerged from the Führer's mouth. A million conservative ears from Amsterdam to Danzig fixated on his voice and the radios and televised sets. Like pigs, the true undimension of the Reich lapped up Speer's lives were brothers in race. And while conservatives got more sport, it's alright. It's alright. Oh, look at that. It's progressing at one out of every 14 days. So that's a lot not good. But hold a speech because we can. Um, hopefully they will come back and join us, because we love the Dutch. We love the Dutch sometimes. Deny our, our complicity. In the decaying NSDAP, a true nest of vipers, if there ever was one, that was responsible for Germany's moral failings, as our late daddy became more enraged with g winning the war and then entered semi-retirement. Some members of the party took the opportunity to enrich themselves and corrupt Germany at the expense of other people. Of our people! Our great Reich would never have plummeted to such miserable depths as Speer, the sole bright light in the party hierarchy, had been able to purge it of its worst members decades ago. Every conflict, every corrupt official, every abuse of power and crime against humanity, every single one perpetrated by the NSDAP's criminal elements despite Speer's best efforts. That will be our line. Do not query it. Do not query the Fuhrer. Do not speak with insiders or trust what you hear in the underground. Do not investigate. After all, don't you trust your Fuhrer? Wooing the Dutch. It was in his negotiations that Speer realized he had underestimated the Dutch. Dealing with a nation built on foundational traditions of economic, diplomatic, and trading expertise was not, he discovered, a walk in the park. To woo the Dutch. Speer, after some amount of stern lecturing and heated argumentation originating from one Ludwig Erhard, elected to offer them economic subsidies instead of the immediate acceptance he had hoped for. The German Führer was met with smiling faces of the Dutch ministry, reliably followed by Erhard sending Speer a responsive glare. They demanded more, much more. Speer was faced with a decision. He could cave and hand the Dutch their favorable subsidies subsidies, which would curry favor in the hog and guarantee them joining the pack, but harm both Germany's treasury and the Führer's legitimacy. On the other hand, Speer could refuse, try to call the Hague's bluff while maintaining his image and his resources, but reducing the potential sympathies of the Netherlands for the pact, and certainly alienating Germany from Holland's favor. Except the demands pay the full subsidies? I don't care. It's fine. One-time one time payment? Fine with me, I don't care. Get him in with us. That is much more important. Showing the crimes. Though their followers have been killed, imprisoned, or brought to heel. 
The legacies of Bowman, Goring, and the, the handsome dude remain. Knives in Germany's back. In time, there's, as their supporters are converted or weeded out, these painful memories will fade. Perhaps that's not enough, though. All these claims to the fellowship commanded immense respect and popularity among the populace. Exposing their dealings and crimes through the state media and public testimony would be a wise move, but attempting to discredit all of them at once would arouse suspicion. Bowman's conservatism, ruthlessness, and devotion to Nazism represented the total anathema of what Speer's supporters stand for. He spent much of the past three decades spreading his poison, infecting most of the party. Rooting out this rot from the group would go a long way towards decreasing internal resistance to reform. Borman was always careful to operate within the bounds of the law, but still inspired fear and hatred in many of his subordinates now that he's gone, though. They might be more willing to testify against his memory. Goring. The fat man I always had enjoyed wide popular support due to his status as a war hero, but the greater threat by far is his former support base in the Wehrmacht. Owing to her great victories in the Second World War, the Wehrmacht remains a defining part of German culture and society. Still, their militarism is a clear and present danger to the Reich, serving only to turn yet more nations against us truth truthfully and thankfully. Goring has a long record of illicit financial activities, activities that would ruin his reputation if they were to be exposed. And finally, there is the Blonde Beast. The SS might be a widely loathed bunch, but Hadrush himself managed to retain a positive image following the West Russian War due to Hitler's high opinion of him, his reputation for decisiveness and spots and discipline. Obviously, admiration for him might quickly morph into admiration for Himmler, and we cannot afford to have Burgundian filth columnists, or fifth columnists, activists in Germany exposing him while memories of the war are so fresh in people's minds could destroy any pro SS sentiments for good. Whom shall we bury in history? Uh, I definitely do want to do Bormann. Goran the Corrupt Warmonger would be nice. Um, the reformers gods would benefit from this in a little bit. And Hadrius is a blood-soaked butcher. Borman Hitler's shadow. When he lose stability, he had more political power, so. Yeah. A oh, vast political promises. Cool. And, oh, wait, oh, look at that. Hold on. So, basically, you spend 20 PP. You, d you don't get any more regime stability, realistically. And for 31 days, you get more authoritarian Democrat and national social support. Is that what we want? I thought we wanted more just fascism. Because this one will go way down, which I don't like. Is that worth doing? We don't have these guys here yet. So have so many slaves. I do apologize for taking a while for this. I'm not sure that's really worth doing. Let me know in the comments below. Is vast political promises worth doing at all? Maybe it is. I'm not really sure. So I don't want to finish off the Dutch, so. Oh, that's not good. And then we'll do end Aryan lineage studies, which would be nice. And Wilson's been elected president. An agreement reached. Stan gave this entire handshakes in the Hague today, as the Fuhrer and the Netherlands have finally come to a compromise surrounding the matter of subsidies. Formalities abound, with H.A. Sinclair de Rochemont and Speer engaging in all the manners of the true Germanic statesmen. An image of the two is the cover of the front page of the Volkische Beobachter. The leaders smiling, their arms around each other, it'll make for a good headline and an excellent symbol of the renewed unity of the nations. These are just unnecessary appearances, however. Neither the Dutch nor the Germans are entirely pleased with the outcome in any event. With an imperfect agreement reached, the negotiations are almost ready to conclude. Politics is not an exact science. Look at this. A couple slaves, huh? Uh, oh, oh, we can do this? Oh, I, I didn't know we could actually click on this. Oh, the Werwerschaftsführer can only be about once Speer's... Once Speer's solidified his reign. Okay. Huh, what does this do? Oh, we need more commit. Can we do that one? No, we can't do any of this. 100%, huh? Okay, that's kind of interesting. I didn't know we could do this. Oh, uh, can we do one more? Token political promises? Yes. Oh, that's, that's not too bad. And, actually, are they with us? No, they're not yet. That sucks. <clears throat> Renew the laws. Regardless of our chosen position on the Nuremberg laws, in the current state, they are the source of endless debate, arguments, and even riots. Everyone barring about Bormanites agreed that they need to be revisited at the very least. We will formally announce through state media that a review of the laws will be carried out in due course by the Fuhrer and his trusted advisors. If nothing else, it will soothe the current unrest over them and give us some breathing room. There's more to the situation, of course. Even today, after the mere decades of National Socialist rule, we can see that Hitler's ra racialism provided the catalyst for the birth of Himmler's deranged, rabidly purist ideology. Even the U.S., which once taught us so much about proper racial segregation, is inexorably moving away from hardline racial hierarchies. If we fail to abolish or amend our current policies, who knows where they might lead us? Brothers in arms. After a long and not in the slightest easy process, Holland has re-entered the pact. Ceremonies are being held in Germania. The Hague, or Hague, Amsterdam and elsewhere across the two nations. The papers are decorated with messages of Aryan Brotherhood, while the streets are adorned with twin banners of the Prinz, uh, flag and the swastika flying together in the wind. Holland and the Reich are now themselves flailing together in the wind, in a hostile world still haunted by the Hitler's ghost, one more ally for the new Reich is far from taken for granted by the Fuhrer. This new development has not saved him from the punishment of returning home, however. <clears throat> 
Erhard has developed quite the list of criticism for the Führer's handling of the subsidy situation, with the plane from The Hague to Germania providing just enough time to go through them. Unlike his economic counterpart, Schmidt has little say on the matter for now. Speer is scarcely paying attention to either. As the plane left off Deutsch soil, the Führer stares out of the over the city's landscape. As it fades into the countryside, the old man sighs, one more nation, he thinks, times and the like. My friends, we've done it. Next up, status of... Oh, uh, we can do Denmark next, that's fine. All right, uh, let's see. The Germanization of a northern protectorate has been underway for the last two decades. As well as the future of the nation in relation to the Reich, we must address its changing political situation and work towards integrating it back into that Einheitspact. Hey, look, 1.04, that's a little better, so. Hey, Siemens is here. Actually, how many slaves they got? Not that many, which is good. They, they have quite a few, of course. And actually, this part of Prussia, was it West Prussia? Approach the Danes. Uh, well, almost six million, wow. Speer had always found it a little annoying, if he was to openly be honest about it, that this small nation of not much significance stood up tall above the Reich, retaining its full independence and colors on any map printed out. Not only could they be easily swayed to join the pack, but it also could make a strong case on why they would only benefit from such a thing, being close Aryan brothers and having no real land disagreements. The ideal would be twofold. First, Speer would offer the Danish government a small helping hand upon entering the pack so they could ease themselves in and be comfortable amidst the rest of the Reich's allies. Second, he would hold a speech that would be televised to viewers home and abroad where he would testify to the strength of the Reich and the solitary situation the Danish found themselves, which, if they accept the help if they accepted the help of the Aryan brothers below, it was something that would be easily rectified. Now, all that remained was to begin planning. They will return home. They must. Oh, if, oh, I didn't realize we have so much more here down here. They carried the stick. There's nothing particularly outstanding about Denmark, he thought, once Speer had overlooked the economic analysis of the country. Nothing at all that really makes it especially valuable besides being another source of manpower and labor to feed into the Reich. That wasn't the concern here, however, even if Speer considered the Danes to be easy candidates for Germanization. They would become allies first, and anything else would come afterwards. As a short and direct economic plan was being drafted up, which would give the Danes small temporary privileges upon entering the Reich, this would take up a small portion of the Reich's budget, and perhaps annoy the other subjects of the pact slightly for favoring them like this, but continuing to consecrate the rule across Europa would only benefit everyone involved. Now on to the next step. And I know I'm doing this a little bit ahead of time, but I don't really care. I want to get things done and accomplished. Also, a couple comments. Um, someone did actually do a list of focuses that I need to do, like doing corp mega corporations and silver tongues, Wehrmacht reform, U.S. diplomacy, and stuff like that. So we'll do that. Uh, someone also said we should auto complete the focuses to get Madagascar and Hutig betrayal done. Well, it's kind of already too late for that, but it is what it is. Hold speeches, yes, please. Not bad. And let's see. Yeah, cool. I think we already went through most of the focuses at least at the time of this recording. So my apologies if I missed your focuses. And Ireland wants to rejoin. Now the rightful government of the German Reich has triumphed, our old allies seek to join us once again. This time, Ireland has requested to join the pact once more as Bundespartner. This request particularly coincides with the fact that Ireland is currently suffering a deep economic crisis, thankfully for them. We feel generous to accept our old Gaelic partners in a sphere to maintain our control over the European continent. With Ireland back under our wings, we regain our strategic position to project our naval power on the Atlantic. Piece by piece, we are recovering our old strength, showing the Japanese savages and the American plutocrats that the Reich is back on the game. Welcome back. They are nothing without us, though. Speer couldn't understand how some men could hold speeches that lasted for so long about such trivial things. This chiefly was one of those trivial things. He was already so close in convincing them to join that he was almost visibly annoyed with dragging it out on the dragging out with the Danes by the time he began to address the people listening. There was a short interlude whereupon a presenter introduced the many towers of the Fuhrer, inciting roaring applause from the audience that was present before the man nodded towards Speer as he let him take the stand. To the people of Denmark, listen to what I have to say next. I wish to call upon you a simple fact, a statement that cannot be ignored, an issue that cannot be resolved, a bothersome idea that trails behind your every footstep. Speer took a deep breath. Now you are alone. In this reshaping of the New World Order, you are alone. All of your troubles, your loneliness, your vulnerability, this will leave you only as prey for greater powers willing to ruin you bring you down to the sinking depths of history but we are your dramatic brothers we are your neighbors the ones from across the river that shall bid you a warm greeting we the men of the reich are here for you like a man fumbling in the raging river drowning and calling for help we will come to you and lend you a hand and with a mighty dramatic grip we will pull you out to the safety of the world and we will call you a friend of ours come denmark for the thousand year reich shall soar with the rest of europa on its wings i see how they hold speeches about trivial things now quite 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 and then Sondergericht. Policy is all well and good, but we live in a society far removed from the norms of Weimar and the Second Reich. The consolidation and defense of our Fuhrer's newfound power will not be achieved by the accumulation, accumulation of votes or careful backroom negotiations, but by decisive action and ruthless use of the justice system. Though we walk the path to a better world, our enemies crowd around us, seeking to drag our Fuhrer into the muck of ideological fanaticism. Naturally, there's only one solution. 
We must follow in Hitler's footsteps and use all means necessary to crush our most resilient opponents. The corrupt criminals in the NSDAP and bureaucracy must be rooted out and crushed underfoot, consigned to fitting judicial sentences or otherwise removed as obstacles. The public will have a full, unadulterated demonstration of honest German justice, boosting confidence in the Fuhrer and proving the benevolent nature of our administration. Welcome home, my friends. Speers set out. I let out a sigh of relief. What else was he expecting to happen, really? Considering the geopolitical position of the Danes, there really was only one option left for them to take. The other would leave them stranded and alone, ripe for the taking. As he silently read the letter through in his office, a small, satisfied smile came to his lips. They had agreed, and over the course of the next month, Denmark would begin its entry into the pact. Seems like his Germanic rhetoric had begun working after all, and the money boost certainly could convince the more pragmatic-minded Danes in the cabinet. The economy of the Einheits pact would see a small but noticeable increase in its wealth, and the map of Europe would printed out in the future could finally Finally, she that small blotch of land in as belonging to the Reich's sphere of influence, with us taking care of Speer turns to other issues, such as the issue of Slovakia. Having annexed the territory of Bolmen and Maren, the Reich turns its monolithic gaze to the territories of Slovakia, surrounded with no friendly nations to back them up, and being simple to return back into the fold of the pact, we will issue them a concise ultimatum. They will either join or we will smash open their pitiful army and march straight into Bratislava. And uh, my apologies, I did forget about this. Um, we can't really do anything here anyways. We, need, we, we have no liquid reserves. We don't have that much army XP. Um, even if we lose the first turn, it is what it is. It's fine. Whatever. Gateway to the Balkans. Very good. Oh, look. Three out of one, 14. Not bad. To the south of Germany, bordering our territories in Schleisen, Schlesien and Maud and lie the Carpathian Mountains. This great wall of rock caged the newly unified Hungary in the 9th century, and before that had been the barrier of the even great Romans that could not reach before being halted in their eastern expansion. It is a bulwark and a blight on our influence in the Balkans and beyond. There is one solution here, albeit a simple one. Winning over Slovakia would bypass the Carpathians and give the Reich a wider border with Hungary. Additionally, the reintegration of Slovakia into the pact would regain Germany an old ally, increasing her legitimacy in the eyes of both the public and abroad. Considering this, the Führer has seen an ultimatum to Bratislava and join the pact, or face ultimatum. Just in case. You never know. Cool, so yeah, I'm a oh, look at this. It actually turned over here. Now we're leaning reformist. Somewhat reformist mind, and as a conservative pivot, huh? This is really disappointing. So we're gonna lose this one. I hope we don't lose Hungary in the end, but you never really know. Madness and purges. Theodor Oberlander walked into his office to find it had been ripped apart. His pillow has been tossed aside and torn apart, as if someone expected them to contain some secrets. His drawers have been left half open, and there were papers scattered all over the room. And yet, there's not a person around to answer for it. His first thought was that someone had broken into his office, stolen something of importance or value, but who would be bold enough to rob the president of the Reichstag? He didn't have to think long about the answer. Oberlander returned, sprinting down the hall from the ransacked office, for all he knew they were already looking for him. The building was emptier and quieter than Oberlander had ever remembered it being. The only sound present were his shoes against the floor. He rounded the corner, seeing that no door, seeing the door, to what was once Hedrich's office had been left ajar. His lungs heaving the heaving the mad dash. He entered the room and closed the door behind him, making sure to lock it. A folder had been left open at Hadrich's desk, neatly stenciled on front. He knew were the words, Theodor Oberlander. Oberlander picked through the files until he reached the end. On the final page were the words he himself had added on the day of Hitler's death, completely cleared of all suspicions regarding disloyalty to the Reich. To anyone else's eyes, it would have looked as if it was a memo Hadrich had written years before. Any papers proving otherwise had been rendered to ash and were now sitting in Oberlander's home wastebasket. And a sense of weightlessness and total relief filled Oberlander. They had found nothing, Speer had found nothing for which the president of the Reichstag could be blamed, no matter how exhaustive his search had been. As Oberlander stood to leave, he heard the unmistakable sound of gunfire from outside the window. He had not been the only one. Speer I will pay for this. But you never know. Mm, what else is down here? Oh, we can do the Polish Thorn. The Kalkazi question. A fortress up north. I kind of want to do that one. I like this one in the model colony. Uh, what is this? Ostland. Oh, yeah. Uh, we'll probably want to do the Polish Thorn next then. Because we did Denmark, Dietzen, and Das Protective Pokemon. But I'm going to wait till uh, Slovakia is done. Sondagerest and Ehaplan must be started as early and followed as closely as possible for the best work. The Schmidt proposal. Uh, we gotta do both of these. My enemy is my enemy? Oh boy. Well, the Erhard plan. Our new Minister of the Economy, famed economist Ludwig Erhard, is one of the Führer's most trusted confidants. Though disliked by the NSDAP for his unorthodox belief in free market economics and liberalism, he is widely acclaimed as one of the most intelligent and astute administrators a Reich ministry has seen in years. Radicalism aside, Erhard has a fear as full confidence is about as popular as his economist economists could ever hope to be with the populace, owing to his concrete evidence for the wisdom of the Speer's economic reforms. Erhard is also a man with a plan, or several. He has spoken in the past of abolishing price controls, constraining 
uh, inflation, opening up foreign markets, and even abolishing slavery outright in order to give Germans more employment opportunities. And that's to say nothing of his proposed budget cuts for the Wehrmacht. Truly, the Reich has never seen such a radical within the halls of power. Success. Our diplomats have returned to Germany with good news. Slovakia intends on rejoining the pact peacefully. With our old ally reintegrated, a new section of our border has been secured, and our foreign policy has, has, can begin wandering elsewhere. Heims in Reich. And the Polish thorn. History has clearly dictated that Poland must remain a sharp pain in Germany's backside no matter the decade. With the Burger Creek won, we must turn our attention eastwards and make a firm decision on how to deal with this one once and for all. Oh, this really sucks. This really sucks. Oh, a thorn in our side. Oh, if you want to about that, please go right ahead. Oh, crud. We have to do this one? The Marshall strategy. Relax, Mr. Splant. Oh, crud. Speak softly. What is all this? An alternative? Uh oh. Um, oh boy. Oh boy. It's still turn one, and we're about to end the episode two. Oh, uh, we'll get that one too. That's fine with me. Um, if that's the case, I don't know. Uh, I want to finish up the last focus that we're doing right now to see what would happen. And currently, what do we have? Those guys are killing each other. That's fine. I know this is kind of a longer video, but it is what it is, you know. Cool. I'm going to read whatever focus thing we have here. A hot plan. Oh, austerity. Ah, uh, propaganda campaign ended. Posters are slowly coming down across the Reich. Radio programs are steadily returning to their normal broadcast. TV networks are losing their political bent. The propaganda campaign is concluding and the final pages are underway. Statisticians in the Vogsal and the Chancellor are running through the data and the polling. Success does seem within the realms of possibility. And that possibility is something Speer is more than happy with. Sondergericht. I'm going to spend a lot more here, probably. That'd be really good, probably, right? Probably, right? Cool. It was a rigid, frigid morning. With the dawn still hours away when Albrecht Lorenz was sentenced to death, awoken by insistent hammering on his apparent apartment door shortly after midnight. Lorenz was incautiously in his drowsy state. He had even been more alert. He might have realized that the armed men outside his door were the Gestapo officers possessed of absolute loyalty to the new Fuhrer. Gagged, blindfolded, and cuffed and unceremoniously bundled into the back of a waiting car, Lorenz had struggled and thrashed all the way from his home in the special court set up in the local NSDAV HQ. When he was thrown into a cold steel chair before a uh, known Speer judge, Lorenz finally comprehended his predicament. His bindings removed, he loudly and insistently proclaimed his innocence in the few seconds before someone struck him over the head with a truncheon. He recovered just in time to hear the verdict, in accordance with the Fuhrer's directives. This court finds you guilty of treason, homosexuality, and Bolshevik sympathies. The sentence, of course, is death. Hauled from the special court by balaclava wearing guards, none present, none present would ever forget Lauren's screams protest, scream protest, as he was dragged out beyond the court, put up against the brick wall, and shot twice in the head with a P-38. Thus began the Great Purge and the end of the Reich's fifth columnists. Our new Führer has teeth. Sondergericht in Deutschland. Poor guy, but oh well, these traders get what they deserve. And I guess for now, we got to do more budget stuff. Max it out. How much more can we do? More political power growth. Screw it. Launch a campaign. All right, then, my friends. I hope you enjoyed this episode. It's been a long one, but I am really interested in seeing how how reformist we can go with Speer. And it looks like, holy crap, who united awesome. But regardless, if you like the video, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow as we'll figure out what Speer has in store. Thanks for watching. Have a tremendous, tremendous Speerite rest of your day.